Bible says that Jesus Christ also said this. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father unless you come through me. So if you come into a right standing relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you are assured, according to the word of God, that you will be saved. Check out uh, Romans, the 10th chapter, the 9th and the 10th verses. It don't matter the time that you do it. Understand this. It ain't about your time, no how. It's in the fullness of times according to God. So when you come in was when you were supposed to come in. But you will get the same reward in heaven uh, as, you would, as anybody else that came in. Now understand this. There are crowns that people will get that may be different. But the reward of being with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in heaven, in that place that Jesus said he's going to prepare for you, that's what every believer in Christ will get that has been obedient unto God's will till the end. And I had to say that, and I'm just about done, y'all. Let, let me tell you, lest we forget, oh, Lord have mercy, this is going to be the good verse to conclude on, lest we forget what God has done for us and that gift that he gave us that kept on giving, lest we forget, if you think that you can do uh, what God has promised that he has, will do for us, uh, uh, then you're grossly mistaken. And I'm going to help your understanding as best as I can as I conclude with these verses as found in Matthew, the seventh chapter, starting at that 21st verse. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and driven out demons in your name and done many mighty works in your name? And then I will say to them openly, publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you, who act wickedly, disregarding my commands. I cannot tell you how important that understanding needs to be in your hearing. Let those that have an ear hear what the Spirit is saying, lest we forget. Most gracious and eternal Father, Lord God, we come to this hour just to say thank you. Thank you, Father God, for all that you've done, Father God. Thank you for the illumination of your word, Father God, by way of the Holy Ghost. Father God, I cannot thank you enough, oh, Father God, how you've ministered to us on this day. Now, God, as we prepare to go forth throughout the rest of this day, I'm praying, Father God, that we do so, Father God, uh, in accordance to what you would have us to do, Father God. Uh, we want to be, oh, oh, Father God, we really want to become doers of your word more so than just hearing. We want to grow and mature in you, Father God, for you've already instructed us in, in the word that, w that this should happen. And we want to do that what needs to be done that would bring us into complete harmony with one another and with you. Because failing to do so, Father God, would mean that there is another place that we're headed. Lord God, I thank you. I glorify you. I magnify you. Father God, continue to bless uh, Sound the Alarm Ministry, Father God, as we go forth in the power and strength and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Father God, we realize that there's no good thing that we've done, oh Father God, within the ministry of the Father God, other than the fact that we are willing vessels, oh Lord God, uh, with no... With no uh, 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 qualms about being used by you and however you would use us. Continue to bless my wife, Pastor Sherry O. Weathersby, as she works on the job, uh, the lead and guide and direct and watch over her. And bless me, Father God, as I, I'm going to stay home this day, uh, Father God, uh, healing my, my uh, tendonitis in my ankle. Father God, I thank you for all that you've done. I thank you for your word, Father God. It is truly it is truly a lamp under my feet and a light under my path. And Father God, as I sit here right now, I am in total awe of you because I thank you. I thank you that you deem me worthy to illuminate your word to me in the manner that you do. 
Father God, I cannot explain it other than knowing that it is not I that do it, but it is you that is within me. Because I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Now, I, I want to, oh my God, before we go, Father God, we want to be mindful. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We don't want to be remiss. The word of God has gone forth. The message has been preached in your, the word of God has been preached into the hearing of the people. Now, we do what must be done anytime the word of God is preached into the hearing of the people. We're going to go and, and, and offer to the unsaved, those of you who have yet to get into a right standing relationship, those of you who have yet to accept that gift that Jesus Christ, that God himself gave, he gave of his own self when he did not have to do it. He did it for you and I. He did it for everybody, the world. So therefore, this is your time. This is your time to receive that gift of God. And all you have to do is in accordance to Romans, the 10th chapter, the 9th and the 10th verse. Because if you acknowledge and confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and in your heart believe, adhere to trust in and rely on the truth that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, a person as a person believes, adheres to, trusts in, and relies on Christ, and so is justified, declared righteous, acceptable to God. And with the mouth, he confesses, declares openly, and speaks out freely his faith, and confirms his salvation. If you agree with that, then the Bible says that you will be saved. And if that be the case, and you're saved, and you're now saved, and even those that are saved that have yet to do what I'm going to offer to the ones that just got saved, you need to be in a church home. Why is that? Because in order for you to grow and mature in the faith, you have to be in a church home, a Bible-believing church that will teach you, uh, uh, grow, uh, to help to teach you to grow and mature in the Lord, nurture you as, as needed, so that you can become that what God would have you to become. A disciple that will go forth out into the out into the world and make disciples of others. You need to learn. We all need to learn. And if that be the case, get yourself into a Bible believing church home. Amen. And because we are a church that has just recently started seven months, and you're living in the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania area, southern New Jersey area southern maryland area and the state of delaware then we invite you to come to sound the alarm ministries amen 3101 north market street or west 31st street is the side door entrance wilmington delaware 19802 amen uh we share that space which is, the space happens to be the actual headquarters for the union american methodist episcopal church with, we said we shared that with one of their satellite satellite churches, New Hope UAMEC, where their very fine pastor is Reverend Gilbert Bruton, and his quarterly conference assignee assistant is Reverend Marilyn Turner. Their services start at 11 a.m. Uh, we start services after they're done, and we generally say one, but it could be from 12 to whatever time they get done is when we start. And generally speaking, it's before one o'clock mostly. So uh, we invite you to come and be a part of this dynamic ministry. We are starting, as God would have us to do, from the ground floor up. So you can come and take claim to being a part of the start of Sound the Alarm Ministry. Oh my God, understand this. The, sound, the start of Sound the Alarm Ministry was already started uh, when God birthed it to my wife some 15 years ago. He told her she wanted to know what God had for her to do, and he told her, sound the alarm. And after uh, the passing of her late husband, Elder Donald uh, Scales, in 2011, uh, she birthed that ministry in Columbus, Ohio, where she had been living for about, oh, I think 29 years at that time. Amen. And, and, uh, and, and then for three years, two and a half, close to two and a half, three years, she was there until she made her way uh, back home to Wilmington, Delaware um, on January 31st, 2014. Amen. And, and for all intents and purposes, she thought that the ministry was not going to live on. But I had already told her by way of the Holy Ghost, 
found the alarm ministry would not die. And we thank God for that. The rebirth of Sound the Alarm Ministry came forth on December the 12th, 2015. And we are in operation. Uh, we have yet to attain uh, anyone that has joined our church yet. But we've ministered to people. And we know through the revenues that, that God has given us, the resources, well, I shouldn't say revenue, the resources God has given us, such as this live podcast we are absolutely reaching the world. We are global ministry. I've been able to access that information because I, yeah, the other day, I came across statistics for Spreaker.com, my Spreaker.com account, and it tells me that 96.6% of my listeners are from the United States of America. 3. 96.6, 96.8, 3.2% are from Kenya. And I thank God for Bishop uh, Fred F.Y. and his wife, Pastor uh, Reverend Alice F.Y. Uh, from Nairobi, Kenya. Oh, God, they've been faithful uh, supporters in, uh, of Sound the Alarm Ministry since our inception. And I also thank God for all those in Philadelphia, 23 point some percent, uh, 7 percent out of Baltimore, 4.7 percent from Scranton, Pennsylvania, 2.3 percent from Pensacola, New Jersey, 2.3 percent. From Gibbsboro, New Jersey. I've never been to those two places where I know people, but I have had some experience in that area from South Jersey. And then 2.3% from my hometown of Buffalo, New York. We thank God for each and every one of you, but we thank God more than everybody else because the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord, and He deserves all honor, praise, and glory for the things He's done. So I'm going to say to God be the glory for the great things He's done he is doing and he's yet to make manifest for Sound the Alarm Ministry. This is Minister Arthur L. Weathersby. And again, uh, Sound the Alarm Ministry, uh, Joel 2.1 is our foundational scripture. We are crying loud and sparing not. Stay hungry and thirsty for the word of God and foremost God himself. God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Study to show yourselves approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed. Rightly divide, to rightly divide, which means he understand the word of truth, which is the Bible. God loves you and so do we. Amen. And there's one other thing that we like to say at Sound and Law Ministry. When we leave, we say this. We do the thing in the Lord. Now, God bless you. And what I'm going to do is going to let you listen to a closing song. And this is why we're doing what we're doing. This is why uh, it is so important for Sound and Alarm Ministry to be in effect because you guys need to understand I'm something. To introduce you really need to understand something. And after we get past God, the introduction by Bishop Joseph Walker, song, the presiding awesome. bishop I mean, I'm you, for, the that song, right? for the, uh, uh, the full gospel Baptist. He's got a brand new album. Uh, uh, he's out of Nashville, Sunday Tennessee, CD, and his church is Mount Zion. Amen. But he has somebody that he's bringing, he's bringing forth, uh, 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 an anointing. A pastor himself, uh, Reverend Pastor Charles Jenkins, he pastors the church. And Reverend Clay Evans, a pastor. And he has a song that was just, just, just took over on the nation, y'all. And it explains what we're doing here. We're sound, why we're doing it, what we're doing in Sound and Long Ministry. You need to understand we so that, that we are in a war. We're not in a war against just uh, the natural terrorism that's going on in the world today. Uh, we're in a war against spiritual. It's a spiritual warfare. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they're mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. And you have to be fully equipped to fight this war. The Bible tells us so. So we pray that, that, that you become fully equipped so that you can be going to battle. But know this, the battle ain't yours, it's the Lord. But he will equip you to do what the part that you need to do. Amen. And you need to understand. And I'm waiting for Bishop, a pastor, to get into the song. He's doing some things here, acknowledging some people. He about ready to get started, I do believe. I do believe he about ready to get started. Come on, Pastor Charles Jenkins. Yeah, yeah, he he, he he talking about some stuff. He talking about some stuff. And he's talking in a low tone, so can't pick it up. Yeah. Well, I'm going to let you hear it. And then we're going to tell you what's happening. You need to be able to understand. You need to be able to recognize. You need to be able to declare. 
that you know what, ain't, it ain't gonna happen, it won't work.